What's up guys, how's it going? It is Matt here. So we're gonna be talking about drifting our sights today. So we're gonna be talking about drifting our sights today. Now if you guys remember back in my uh, Glock 19 versus the 229 video that I was doing, which is actually my Glock 19 versus my M11A1, if you take a look at that video, you notice something similar. It is both the shooting what I was doing where the grouping is very similar. I was just a little bit more consistent with a Glock than I was with the SIG. I do like the SIG a little bit better still, hence the hat. I still like SIG a little bit better than Glock. My grouping was a little bit off when it came to my SIG because I was aiming center mass was a, aim, was a hitting to the left. The same thing with my Glock. I was aiming center mass that goes a little bit to the left. Now, every single one of my guns, because I'm cross-eyed dominant, I've ever shot, every single pistol I've ever shot, I've always put the rounds to the left. Always, 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 regardless of fundamentals, regardless of grip, trigger control, it always goes to the left. If you have bad trigger control or bad grip, what that usually does, it'll tend to say you'll throw your rounds if you're right-handed, low and to the left. If you're left-handed, low and to the right. It'll throw the rounds over there, but it'll be very inconsistent because they're not going the same way because it's a different twist every single time you do it. So basically what it is, is right here, this is my M11A1 right here. When you're pulling the trigger, it's been cleared part of the video, is you're doing a couple things. You're either taking your, you know, people say this, is, this isn't this is a real thing. Oh, it's not a real thing. It's just the grip. If you take your finger on the trigger and you're pushing it this way, instead of pulling it straight back, if you're pushing it this way, it can actually move, can move your gun a little bit. See how it's doing that? The same thing goes if your grip is too tight. If your grip is too tight, it, you, you can't move this finger without moving these ones. So if it really tense and you try moving this, go ahead, tense up this hand. Just try this. Tense up this hand really well. All right, tense it up and try to move your, your, your trigger finger without moving your other fingers a little bit. So if you have a very loose grip out on this gun, it's not an issue. If you have a tight grip, your death grip on the gun is gonna be also throwing it every single time you pull it, it's gonna be doing that. So there's two reasons why the, the rounds go low into the left or low into the right. I'm actually experimenting with a new grip just to be sure, which is basically the same grip I've always taught, except the only difference is on this side, if you take a look here, my light's a little intense there, is I take my finger and instead of wrapping it like I've always done here, I'm taking my finger right in here, I'm putting it in here, all right? I'm putting it in here, by the opposite side of the mag well, and I'm putting that tight. And it allows me to loosen this tight, this grip up a little bit and put my hands down there. So the tensing, I'm focusing on the pressure on my pinky and on my, my, shoot, my trigger finger. This right here is where I'm focusing my grip. So that holds the gun steady while this hand is loose, which helps re re reduce some of that shifting. Now, but we're gonna get back to this. So because of my dominance issue, and a lot of dominance guys will probably have the same thing, that, you know, say the same thing here. Every single time you have a pistol, if the sights are zeroed, what that makes it, or if the sights are zeroed out of the box, even if they're lined up properly, your rounds are gonna go a little bit to the left because you have to shift your head a little bit and actually messes up your natural point of aim. That's the only, that'd be my guess of what it is. Now, I could be wrong, but that's my guess of what it is. So what I have to do with every single one of my guns is they either have to make sure it has adjustable sights or I have to make sure I can dovetail the sights. Now, when I bought this, because I've always wanted a SIG, I was all excited about it. I got the Cerakote, the SIG Light Night Sights, double single action, short reset trigger. Yeah, great gun. But I didn't take a close pay attention to the rear sight. It doesn't look driftable. It looks like it's fixed. And if you remember when I was doing videos about that, I even was saying that these are fixed sights and I couldn't move them. This is dovetail. I thought these were fixed. Now, I don't like adjusting front sights because there's not enough metal on here to actually be messing around with because you can actually do some seriously damage or dink it up or something like that. So I never, ever, ever touch the front sights. The rear sights has a lot more metal and a lot sturdier. So if I want to drift my sights, that's what I do. And I was a little ticked off because I didn't, I didn't think this was a gun was dovetailed until I did a little research and found out that it actually is. It is so... The cuts are so nice on this gun that you can't even tell it's dovetailed. You honestly can't tell it's dovetailed until you actually start trying to dovetail your dovetail your sights and move them over a little bit. So all that being said, I had to move my sights. I had to shift my sights. I had to dovetail the sights. Now there's a couple things that you need to remember if you're having these issues. Most, like I said, most of, most of the shooting issues are shooting low to the left or something like that. It usually has to do with grip or the trigger. But if it's a consistent thing, it's consistent grouping. That means you need to shift your sights. So if I'm aiming at the target this way, you need to adjust your rear sights the ways your round wants to go. So if I'm shooting and the rounds are hitting over here, I need to move these sights that way. So I need to move those sights that way so it can pull, bring the rounds over. That's how it works. So if the rear sights, if you're shooting, you need to bring it to the right, move the rear sights to the right. If you're shooting and you need to bring the rounds to the left, then you need to move the rear sights to the left. You move the sights in the direction you want the rounds to hit on target. So 
With that in mind, you need a couple, there's a couple tools that you should probably have when you're doing this. Now, most people will say, I'm an idiot for doing it this way. Most people will say, oh, you should always have a sight pusher. Those are like 70 bucks, a good quality one, and you're talking, no, standard about 50. Good quality, you're talking 70 to $200 for a sight pusher, so you, know, so you can actually put that on there. In order to use those, you gotta take it apart, put it in there, put it on the top, set it up, tighten up the little vices on it, and push it over, and that seems to work very well. It's very balanced. That's one way of doing it. Another way to do it, some people say you need to go out and get smithing tools, like a brass punch and a saw and a hammer it has a soft size and metal size. You know, I don't have that stuff. I'm, I'm just your average everyday dude, so I have average everyday tools. So I'm gonna show you what I do and what I've been doing for years if I don't have a sight pusher. And usually, when I adjust the sights, I'll just take it to a gun shop. Well, the last couple of years, anyway, I've taken it to the gun shop. But for the last 13 years when I've had to do this, I've either had to have adjustable sights or have to be able to do it myself. So anyway, so I took apart this gun. All right, I took apart the slide. So I'll show you the basic tools that you're gonna need. You need a hammer. I like these little hammers, these little small ones. And a flathead, a, a one that's a heavy duty flathead. And you notice there's some tape wrapped around the end of it. So electric tape works the best, but this works too, if you put it on there enough. So you bunch it around there, you bunch it around this flathead. It has a decent sized flathead, not too big, not too big, too small. And what that does is by putting this on, it gives it a little bit of a buffer. Right? It gives it a little bit of a soft edge to it. So it's not digging into the sights when you do it. So I just do it enough so it's not sticking into the sights. Then, some people will say you have to use a vice. You know, not everyone has a vice. Not everyone has a vice in their house and not everyone can go to a gun store and pay someone to do it for them. So I'm gonna show you a basic way to do this at home. So I don't have a vice, so you need a good solid table. This isn't the most solid, but I have a good solid workbench that I'll use every now and then. I'll put that up there just like that. Grab my handy dandy taped up screwdriver here and I take the uh, flathead just like this. Now you don't wanna put it on the top of the sights because that'll shift them too much. It could actually do damage to them. You want to put them kind of mid-height, almost low levels, what I do. So I set up my tape so it's just like that. You put them on there, and with a good solid pressure on this, you simply tap this a little bit. Just a little bit at a time. Little, 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 little at a time. You just keep doing that a little bit at a time. Sometimes you might have to give it a little bit more, but you don't want to, I'm going to destroy you type of thing. You don't want to break your sights. And if you have nice sights, you don't want to break the capsules inside that have the uh, trigicon or tritium in them. So I tap it a little bit, and I keep doing it. Now, the first step that I always do is when I do it, you probably still see it on here. Um, yeah, you can kind of see it, is I always make a pencil mark at the edges, all right? I make a pencil mark at the edges. I'm like, all right, this is where I'm starting at, and I want to see how far I'm adjusting it. So we'll take a look. Now I see the tick marks on there that I have. I put a couple tick marks on there showing me where, I, where my sight started out at. And what I do is when I'm going through this process to dovetail them, now I know how far I usually need to adjust them, because I've just been doing it for so long, I just know pretty much the distance. So if you take a look at my Glock 19 here, right here, I don't know if you can see it very well, but you can see they're drifted pretty far. I'm almost as far as I can get them over there. The same thing goes with my 1911. They're as far, almost as far as I can to get them over there. So it's hard to see with uh, Arsenal's holster here. Here we go. If you take a look, I put I, I adjust it pretty far over is how I do it. So I know, I, pr I pr approximately know the distance that I want my sights to do for pretty much every gun I have, but every gun's a little different, keep that in mind. Well, so I do it and I get it and I boom, boom, boom until I'm happy. And I keep taking a look at it. I look at the tick marks and I see how far I move it and stuff like that. And then I test it. Now you can use a laser tester like this. Um, you can, but the laser doesn't always work the same way the bolt does, <laughs> all right? The laser doesn't always work. Like before, when I was having the issue on the range, when I was shooting, even when I was shooting my SIG on this, the rounds are going a little bit right here, all right? A little bit low to the left. I don't know if you can see it right here. They were going a little bit over here. If I was aiming center mass, my rounds were going about over here on the laser target. So when I shifted my sight, you know, when I was actually shooting, actually when I was out there shooting, I'd be aiming here. If you remember, I was aiming way over here, all right? I was, aiming way, I was hitting way over there while I was aiming center mass. And every single round was going there minus my couple floaters that I would have. So after I adjusted my sights, it actually brought the impact right about here a little, little bit over here, almost to the very corner edge of it. So that looked good for me, but the laser tester isn't the perfect. The actual rounds through it is determines it. So I tested it, the general idea here, okay, I like how that looks there. Then I took it out to the range. Now I was gonna do a video of it this weekend, but it was so cold, I was pretty sure my camera equipment wouldn't work properly. I went out there and my phone started dying from the get-go, and I don't know if my GoPro would actually can, uh, take that much cold. So I took it out to the range the other day, I shot it, and my rounds were my SIG, went from hitting here, to hitting da, 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 
center mass at the very bottom of the target, all right? So what that means is now from now on, if I want to hit center mass, like I said, this is still a good hit when it comes to pistol. That's a, that's a good group for a pistol, but if you want a really good grouping. So what I got to do is I have to have a 12 o'clock hold, which means I have to aim like if I want to hit here, center mass. If I want to hit here, then I got to aim like right about here, all right? So I have to hit a 12 o'clock hold is what I have to do from now on. But because I dovetailed my sights, I shifted them over there, it's lined up center mass to where I want it to be. Now, will that improve the consistency consistency of the gun? I don't know. Um, I don't know. I've been very consistent with my Glock. I've, I, I've great with striker fire guns. I'm pretty consistent with my 1911 too. But my SIG, it, it, there's a little bit of inconsistency. It's not just between the first and second rounds. I just throw more rounds. So I, it's something I'm working on personally, but I still love this gun and I still love carrying this gun because I like that double action feature. But anyway, I just wanted to give you this quick little t training tip, trip advice, whatever you want to call it. So if you're like me and you've been struggling with it for years, no matter what you do is even if you have good grouping and it's always a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right of the target, you got to adjust your rear sight. And once again, if you want your rounds, if you're hitting the impacts in your, and you want your rounds to go right on the target, then you got to adjust your rear sight right. If you want your rounds to go left on the target, then you have to adjust your rear sight left. So, and you only adjust the rear sight, leave, leave the front sight alone. You don't want to bust it up. All right. Anyway, guys, I hope this helps. If you like this video, like, share, subscribe, tell your friends about me. And remember, it's our responsibility to take care of each other and protect each other. Peace.